Okay, now that we have talked about how to write equations and solve equations, we need to talk about number patterns and how we can write rules to describe patterns and identify patterns in both tables and graphs. <clears throat> so here's the situation we want to look at here. Marcus wants to buy light-up balls for a party. They cost a dollar each. The store charges the same shipping fee regardless of how many balls are ordered. So Marcus has to pay for the light-up balls and pay a shipping fee. The table shows the cost C for W light-up balls. How much will he pay for 12 light-up balls? So here's our pattern. We see that if he orders two balls, he pays $4. If he orders four balls, he pays $6. If he orders six, he pays eight. If he orders eight, he pays ten. So one thing we can do right away is we can try to extend this one more spot out if we want to. What if we ordered ten? Well, how what's the difference between C and W? If you notice, each time the output of the table is two more than the input of the table. So we could continue the pattern and see that the next one would be 12. And then if we continue it one more time, that would get us our answer. If he orders 12 balls, that would be 14 because we're just continuing the pattern 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. But what we really want to know is what is the relationship between W and C? How can we express that as an equation? How can we express that as an equation? So we know that each time we're adding 2 to the input. So the output is 2 more than the input. So what operation are we going to do? It's, if it's two more, that means we're adding. So C equals W, because that's our input variable, plus two, because that's how many more the output's going to be. Now, once we know that that's the rule, we can use that rule to solve for the amount that we want. If I know that whatever W is, C is going to be W plus 2, then all I have to do is substitute in the number that I'm looking for, 12 balls plus 2. 12 plus 2 is 14, so the 12 light up balls cost $14. That's the same thing we got when we just filled out the table. Okay, That is one way that we can express a pattern. Now sometimes we won't see the pattern that way. Sometimes we'll see the pattern this way where it's up and down like this. Uh, let me go back up here to show you the difference. When the table goes sideways, the input's on top, the output's on the bottom. If the table is vertical like this, you're going to see the input on the left and the output on the right. And you're going to see in a moment why that's important. Um, the first pattern that we had was an additive pattern. That means we added something to the input to get the output. This pattern is a multiplicative pattern, which means we're multiplying something times the input. So here we see our input is 1, output is 7. Input 2, output 14. Input 3, output 21. Input 4, output 28. What's the common factor in all of these outputs? It's 7. 4 times 7 is 28. 3 times 7 is 21. You see how that pattern goes. So the output is 7 times the input. The pattern is multiplicative because we're multiplying every time. So the rule is 7 times n because n is our input. y is the output. y equals 7 times n. So those are both examples of additive and multiplicative patterns in tables. Now, 
The other way that we can identify patterns is in a graph. You remember back to our uh, constellation project that we did. We looked at how we plot points on graphs. Okay, so here's a graph with a pattern involved, and I want us to look at it. Um, here's our situation. Sona has some dimes. Adil offers to give her nickels for her dimes. The graph shows a relationship between the number of dimes Sona gives to Adil and the number of nickels she receives in exchange. So we'll call this, this is the number of nickels on the y-axis of the graph. Remember this is y. And the number of dimes on the x-axis of the graph. And we want to find the rule that describes this pattern. Well, let's look at the ordered pairs. When x is 1, y is 2. When x is 2, y is 4. When x is 3, y is 6. And when x is 4, y is 8. So the question is, what is the relationship between x and y? Well, here we added 1, but here we added 2, here we added 3. So it can't be additive because we're not adding the same thing every time. But 2 is double 1, or 1 times 2 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4, 3 times 2 is 6, 4 times 2 is 8. So we could say that the pattern is a multiplicative pattern, and the pattern is that the output is 2 times the input. So that means that our pattern, uh, if D stands for dimes, the pattern is N equals 2 times D. Now, something else I want you to notice about this. When we look at this multiplicative pattern, look at where this line goes. And imagine that I can draw a straight line. It starts at zero and goes up. That is how you can tell that a pattern is a multiplicative pattern. Uh, when you see graphs, if the graph goes through zero, it's going to be multiplicative. Now, let's look at an additive pattern. In this case, we have Jack mailing magazines in a box, and the graph shows a relationship between the number of magazines and the weight of the magazines and the box. <clears throat> so, we follow the same pattern here, the same procedure. Start with x equals 1, y equals 3, x equals 2, y equals 4, x equals 3, y equals 5, and x equals 4, y equals 6. Well, that's 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 2 is 4. 3 plus 2 is 5. 4 plus 2 is 6. So we have an added pattern. The output is the sum of the number of magazines and 2. So let's write the rule. If W is the weight, which was here on our y-axis, and M is the magazine, which was on our x-axis, then W equals M plus now I want you to notice something about our additive pattern. If I can draw a line, that line does not pass through the origin of the graph. It is passing through 2. We're adding 2. The line starts at 2. So those are patterns in tables and graphs. You want to continue uh, your spiral review tonight. We'll work some practice problems on these tomorrow. Now have a good evening and good luck on your problems.